this week on Faith Lift. And it shall be established unto thee. Whatever you don't decree is, will not, is what will not be established. Whatever you decree is what will be established. Are you ready? Let's read together, please. Wherefore, as by one man, who's that man? First Adam. Sin entered into and, hmm, stop right there. That means that sin didn't come by itself. Sin had company. Something came on the wing of sin. It says, and death, read in your Bible, please, and death and and death by sin. Now read the next five, six words. Ready? And so. Stop. And so. Stop. And so. Stop. Say pass upon. Say it again. I, say, I can't hear you. Say pass upon. Say it again. Pass upon. Hmm. Notice something. The first Adam did something. Huh? And something was passed upon. Everybody shout, pass upon. upon. You didn't do anything. Why were you born a sinner? Not because of what you did. But because something was passed upon you. Are, Are you hearing me, somebody? Hello? Now, death passed upon how many men? Are you part of all men? So something was passed on to you that you had nothing to do with. Hello. Are you getting this? Everybody said, pass upon. upon. No, say, I want you you to hear yourself say, pass upon. upon. All right, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Are you ready? All right. Hmm. Look at verse 17. Y'all know this verse, right? Let's read that verse together. Please quote it together. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. Now, who is Christ? The last? So, write this down. Therefore, if any man be in the last Adam, he is what? A new creature. Now, are you in Christ? Talk to me. Are you in Christ? Are you in Adam? The last Adam, right? So what are you? A new creature. All right, but before you were in the last Adam, where were you? Oh, you're not sure yet. Where were you? In the first Adam, all right? So this verse is revealing to you who you are after you receive Jesus. Now, but let's change this verse and put it Instead of saying in Christ, the last Adam, where were you before? In the first Adam. All right, so let's put therefore. Therefore, if any man be in Adam, the first, he is what? No, if you're in the last Adam, you're a new creature. If you are in the first Adam, he's an old creature. Right? All things... No, no, no. If you are in Adam, the first, if you are in Christ, it's passed away. But you read Romans chapter 5. Something was passed upon. So let's read it as the first Adam. Therefore, if any man be in the first Adam, he's an old creature. All things are passed upon. You getting this? Are you getting this? Huh? Something was passed on to you. But whatever was passed on in the first Adam is passed away in the last Adam. Huh? Now, what was passed on? (laughs) What was passed on? All right, go to uh, Galatians chapter 3. Oh, 
I'm going to knock your socks off in a minute, I'm telling you. <laughs> Galatians chapter 3. Are you ready? Come on, say, I'm ready. All right, Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Somebody say, hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, you all know this verse, right? All right, let's read together, please. Christ, now who's Christ? Has redeemed us. Now, touch yourself, say, I'm us. Amen. I don't know what you are, but my name is us. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Amen. Christ has redeemed us from what? Huh. From what? Now, stop. Think with me. Did it say curses? What did it say? Curse. Now, if it said curses, it would be plural. But it said curse, which is what? Singular. So how many curse? There's one curse. Christ has redeemed us from what? The curse. The curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree huh so that the blessing everybody said blessing. blessing now did it say blessings or blessing? blessing if it said blessings that would be plural but it said blessing so how many blessings do we have so there's one blessing and there's one curse Huh? Say amen. amen. Now, this is what Paul said. Now watch this. Paul said there is one curse and there is one blessing. Hmm? It's called the blessing of Abraham. All right. Now, we don't have time to turn there. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter says, If you hearken to obey diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to do all his commandments, all these blessings shall come on you. Now, did, this, did, did Moses say blessings or blessing? So how many blessings? Many. Hmm? All these blessings shall come on you and overtake you. Now, for years, I didn't understand that verse. How can a blessing overtake me be a blessing? Because I'm here, here I am driving on the highway of life, and here comes Blessings. Here comes prosperity, and I'm driving 70 miles per hour, and then here comes healing, and wham, and just wham, go by me. How can that be a blessing? But then I'm on the highway of life, and it says, all these curses shall come on you and overtake you. Or what? All these curses. Say curses. Hmm. The question you got to ask yourself. Paul says there's one curse and there's one blessing. Moses says there are many blessings and many curses. Who's right? Paul or Moses? Talk to me, somebody. Who says Paul? Who says Moses? <laughs> somebody said, are you, are you telling me that Moses is wrong? <laughs> no, no, no. There is one blessing that triggers all the other blessings. And there is one curse that triggers all the other curses. Now, watch this. So what's the blessing of Abraham? Romans, the fourth chapter says, What shall we say then concerning Abraham as pertaining to the flesh? It says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him, or counted to him for righteousness. So what is the blessing of Abraham? The blessing of Abraham is righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is the nature of God deposited into your spirit. Righteousness is the ability to go before a holy God without any sense of sin or without feeling inferior. Say amen. Now, look at me. Write this down. The blessing of Abraham is imputed righteousness. Hello? You did not do anything to deserve righteousness. It was the righteousness of Christ given to you. Amen. Say amen. Now, say this after me. Say, the blessing of Abraham is imputed righteousness. So what is the curse of the law? Now for years we've been taught, we, we were told that the curse of the law is spiritual death, 
sickness and disease, and poverty. But if that be the case, it should be known as the curses. Huh? Hello? If, it's, if the curse of the law is spiritual death, sickness and disease, and poverty, it should be known as the curses of the law. But Paul said there's one curse. What is the blessing of, right, of Abraham? Imputed righteousness. What is the curse of the law? Imputed sin. Sin of what? The sin of Adam. You didn't do it, but what he did was imputed to your account. Hello? It is that one curse that triggers all the other strands of curses. It is that one curse that launched spiritual death, that launched sickness and disease, and that launched poverty into the world. Now, watch this. Look at me for a second here. Now, say, one curse, one blessing. Say, many curses, many blessings. It is the blessing of righteousness. If you do not like blood, then you will not like the Bible. The whole Bible is about blood. But more importantly, the blood that will make a difference in our life is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I have in my hand my book, The Blood of Favor. This is a book filled with information that will, that will change your life for the better. If you have a revelation of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you will have a revelation of fearlessness. Order your copy today, The Blood of Faith. In this book, I'll give you seven reasons why you must have faith in the blood of Jesus. Once you understand the power that's in the blood, never again will you be afraid of Satan. Never again will you be afraid of sickness and disease. Never again will you be afraid of curses. Never again will you be afraid of witchcraft. Because there's power in the blood over these elements. Order your copy today, The Blood of Faith. Now there's a number on your screen. I want you to pick up your phone, call that number, and order your copy today, and I know you will be blessed. You can also go to our website, which is www.glenarechion.org, and order your copy today, and I know you will be blessed. I give you my personal word. After reading this book, your life will never be the same again. We are waiting for your call. Pick up your phone and call the number on your screen. Order your book today. The blood of The Blood of Favor by Dr. Glenn Arecchion shows us how salvation is in the blood of Jesus. Then he explains how blessings are within the blood as well. The Blood of Favor is a step-by-step -step process to the victory in your life held in the precious blood of Christ. Discover the sevenfold blessings, keys of protection, and more as outlined by Dr. Arecchion. Get your copy of The Blood of Favor today at bookstores everywhere or by ordering online at glennarecchion.org. Now, say this after me. Say, the blessing of Abraham is imputed righteousness. Hmm. So what is the curse of the law? Now, for years we've been taught, we, we were told, that the curse of the law is spiritual death, sickness and disease, and poverty. But if that be the case, it should be known as the curses. Huh? Hello? If, it's, if the curse of the law is spiritual death, sickness and disease, and poverty, it should be known as the curses of the law. But Paul said there's one curse. What is the blessing of, right, of Abraham? Imputed righteousness. What is the curse of the law? Imputed sin. Sin of what? The sin of Adam. You didn't do it. But what he did was imputed to your account. Hello? It is that one curse that triggers all the other strands of curses. It is that one curse that launched spiritual death, that launched sickness and disease, and that launched poverty into the world. Now, watch this. Look at me for a second here. Now, say, one curse, one blessing. Say, many curses, many blessings. It is the blessing of righteousness. It is the nature of God that qualifies you to receive healing, deliverance, prosperity. Say amen. But it is that curse 
that triggers all the other curses. Now watch. Why is it that one family, watch this now, follow me, follow me, okay? One family, hmm, this family, everybody in that family has diabetes. Huh? The grandfather had diabetes. The great-grandfather had diabetes. The son has diabetes. And it's like a, a curse is like a tracking invisible device. It's like a ticking time bomb. Now, this family has got diabetes. This family, there's no diabetes in that family. But everybody in that family has cancer. The grandfather had cancer. The father had cancer. The son has cancer. Hmm. So diabetes, cancer. This family's got diabetes. This family's got cancer. This family here don't have no diabetes, don't have no cancer. But everybody in this family has divorce. They get married and they have divorce. Let me tell you this. I was in Durban two weeks ago. And this woman came to me and said, Doc, can you please pray for me? He said, my grandmother, before she got married, her, her father died. My grandmother, before she got married, her father died. When my mother, when she got married, before she got married, her father died. My, when I got married, my father died. And when my, grand, when my daughter got married, my husband died. That's a curse. Are you hearing me, somebody? Now watch this. So this family's got diabetes. This has got cancer. This has got divorce. Huh? This one, no matter what it does, nothing works. Nothing works. Now what are these? These are different strands of curses. But the problem is, most people want to deal with the stem. They want to deal with the leaves or the branches. They don't go to the root of the problem. Are you hearing me, somebody? Now, listen to me very carefully. There were two trees in the garden. Hmm? The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The scripture says God reveals the end from the beginning. The tree of life is a type of the Lord Jesus. Can I hear an amen, somebody? In him was life, and the life was the light of man. Say amen, somebody. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Say amen. amen. Then the other side, the tree of not the knowledge of good and evil, is a type of the first Adam. That's why it begins good, and then it all tends to evil. That's why when the human race the begin, everything seems all right. But then everything tends to go pear shape. Are you, are you listening? Now, now, the thing is, come on, say after me. Say, I'm born again. I'm born again. I, I can't hear you. Say, I'm born again. I'm born again. Say, I'm saved. I'm saved. Say, I'm a new creature. I'm say, I'm in Christ. I'm Christ. I can't hear you. Say, I'm in Christ. Say louder. I am in Christ. I'm in Christ. Do you know what happened to you when you got born again? When you got born again, all that you did was that you switched trees. Huh? You used to be in the first Adam. And whatever was in him was passed on to you. Cancer, diabetes, failure. Are you hearing me, somebody? But when you got born again, you were taken out of that tree and you are now in Jesus. Huh? So when the devil comes knocking on your door and tell you that your granddad died of diabetes and that your father died of diabetes and tells you that you are next in line, all you got to tell the devil is the devil, you are barking up the wrong tree. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because I'm no longer in Adam. I am in Jesus. And the last time I checked, Jesus does not have diabetes. The Holy Ghost doesn't have cancer. And God the Father is not depressed. Shout yes! I want to tell you tonight, whatever kill your forefathers has no right to kill you. Come on, touch yourself. Say no diabetes, no cancer, no high blood pressure. I am in Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands and no generational curse. I am in Jesus. Shout yes! The scripture says, as he is. How is he? He's the resurrected Savior. 
He's above all principalities and powers. He's above all cancers. Shout yes! As he is, so are you. Hmm. That means no. Listen, I woke up one day. Woke up one day, I stood in my house. And the whole room began to spin around. And the next thing I knew, I was on the floor. And the only reason why I woke up is because a doctor came to my house. And he had this thing in my jig <laughs> around my arm, pumping, pumping, pumping. And he squeezed my arm. That's the only reason why I woke up. And when I woke up, I saw him. He was an Indian doctor. He said, Mr. Arigyan. I said, yes, sir. He said, you got high blood pressure. And I look at him, I said, that can't be. Huh? What did I say? That cannot be. That cannot be. He said, but I am telling you <laughs> that you've got high blood pressure. I said, Doc, that can't be. He said, but my instrument is telling me that you've got high blood pressure. I said, Doc, I don't care what your instrument tells you. I've got another instrument. It's called the word of the living God. And my instrument tells me by his stripes I am healed. Now, whose report will you believe? Will you believe what an instrument of the world says or what the word says? Huh? Say amen, somebody. He shook his head. He shook. I am not understanding it. <laughs> Hallelujah. That was eight years ago. And up till today, I have never taken a tablet for anything. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Just because my grandfather had it and my father had it or my mother had it doesn't mean it's mine. Because I'm no longer connected to a record. I'm connected to the last Adam. Say amen. amen. Say amen. I've got two minutes. Listen, 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 man. Listen, listen. All you got to do is this. How do you see yourself? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are and behold. Say behold. behold. You know what your problem is? You don't see yourself the way God sees you. You got to behold yourself. You got to see yourself. God said to Moses, see, I have made you a God over Pharaoh. Huh? Say amen. amen. Elisha said to Elijah, if you can see it, you can have it. Huh? How do you see yourself today? I don't know about you, but I see myself blessed coming in and blessed going out. I see myself over principalities and powers. I was in uh, London uh, a while ago, and this Nigerian lady, I love Nigerians. Oh, Nigerians are the most expressive people you'll ever meet in your life. And this woman said to me, Pastor, Pastor! I said, yes, oh. There's an old lady, she said, Pastor! I said, yes, Mama. He said, they're following me, oh. I said, who's following you, Mama? He said, the spirit from back home. They are following me, oh. I said, what? I said, Mama. How did you get into London, England? They said, well, I had a visa. So I said, Mama, who gave the spirit visa to follow you? <laughs> huh? Who gave that spirit visa to follow you? Yeah. No, I don't know what's following you. But as for me, goodness and mercy yeah. is following me all the days of my life. John the Baptist says, and now the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Hmm? So you got to see it. Number two, you got to say it. L listen, listen. The scripture says, death and life is in the what? The power of the tongue. Now watch this. Listen. And then Job says, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. 
Whatever you don't decree is, will not, is what will not be established. Whatever you decree is what will be established. Now, l- listen, it says when there is a falling down, there shall be a lifting up. Now, now the word decree is the Hebrew word gazar. And the word gazar means to decree, to decide, to divide, to destroy. Hmm? To what? To decree, to divide, to decide, and to destroy. Whatever you decide is what's decided. Whatever you decree is what decreed. Whatever you divide is what's divided. Whatever you destroy is what's destroyed. Now watch this. Let me close. He says, death and life is in the? Say power. power. Hebrew word is yad. And the word yad, now write this down. The word yad, stick your tongue out. Hmm? The word, you know what the word yad means? Power, yes. Yad means hand. Hand. So death and life is in the hand of the tongue. Huh? Now, what do you do with your hands? You grab things. You grab things. Yes. You pull things. Your hand is a grabber. Come on, tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Your tongue is a grabber. Neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Your tongue has got some hands. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What will you take? We're going to take healing. We're going to take deliverance. We're going to take prosperity. We're going to take joy. We're going to take blessing. Amen. My time is up. Stand together on your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say, there's a hand on my tongue. I can't hear. Say, there's a hand on my tongue. Say, I'm a new creature. No more curse for me. Now say this out loud before I go. Say, whatever has been killing my forefathers, whatever diseases has been in my family tree, it's now cut off because I am in Christ. Now tell your neighbors, say, neighbor, you don't have to be afraid of anything. You are in Jesus. Amen. The Blood of Favor by Dr. Glenn Arecchion shows us how salvation is in the blood of Jesus. Then he explains how blessings are within the blood as well. The Blood of Favor is a step-by-step process to the victory in your life held in the precious blood of Christ. Discover the sevenfold blessings, keys of protection, and more as outlined by Dr. Arecchion. Get your copy of The Blood of Favor today at bookstores everywhere or by ordering online at glennarecchion.org. Go ye into all the world is a mandate given to every believer. However, not everybody's called to go on the mission field. But you can still play your part in the Great Commission and partner with Glenn Arecchion Ministries. Today, consider to be one of Dr. Glenn's faithful, financial, and prayerful partners.